All right, well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us this morning. We thought we'd just uh, bring together the crew for a quick kind of comprehensive update on what's going on with uh, with the storm and where we're at. Uh, I'm not gonna talk a lot because you, know, you have the experts over here. They're gonna tell you where we're at with kind of the cleanup operation. Um, my theme just is going to be this, that we continue to need just a high level of patience in the community right now. Uh, this is, uh, uh, a record-breaking snowfall for the last couple days and so patience 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 is kind of the theme um, I know a lot of people are asking or calling our office hey one of the plows gonna come past my street and said just patience or we're get we're getting there we're working through the zones right now um, the other theme and I'll uh, and then I'll turn it over to Dustin Anson with the streets is there's a lot of folks right now that are gonna need help uh, just plowing out shoveling out snow blowing out uh, even myself spent a little bit of time outside this morning at my place and this is some heavy snow and there's not a lot of place to put it so checking on your neighbor uh, helping people is going to be a big theme to our uh, 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 digging out process from this one so uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dustin Hanson who's going to tell uh, uh, y'all where we're at with the uh, removal process and our plowing uh, uh, zone process so Dustin Thank you, Mayor. Dustin Hanson, Street Operations Manager with Public Works. Um, just wanted to note that uh, a lot of our crews have been on 12-hour shifts since the middle of December, uh, so they're getting tired just like everybody else. I think we've had one day off in that span, so uh, we've got well over 200 people, including contractors, uh, working this event. Um, so if you see them, uh, tell them, tell them good job, thank you. Um, Obviously, our emergency routes are our number one priority in an event like this. We have, 100, we have those 100% completed as of last night. Uh, we moved into our residential zones, uh, zone three last night about 8 p.m. Uh, we moved into zone two this morning at 8 a.m. And then we'll move into uh, east-west streets at 8 p.m. tonight to finish up zone two. Um, our goal is to have the entire city uh, plowed out uh, early tomorrow morning no later than noon. Um, again, I want to stress there's there's a lot of snow out there. We're narrowing a lot of streets up um, and that, that's just um, typical when we get a lot of snow. We had 20 inches on the ground. Uh, I'm going to debate the 12 inches from the National Weather Service. I think we're probably closer to 20. Um, so it's just going to take us some time. Um, and then after that, we'll be picking up downtown snow and then we'll start to go on our major arterials uh, to pick up that. Um, and so we could potentially be picking up snow for the next three to four weeks um, in the city, um, just because there's so much out there. And it doesn't look like there's a reprieve uh, in temperatures to where we're gonna get some good, good melting. Uh, luckily, next seven days should be dry. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Jeff Gardner. Jeff Garden, Operations, Uniform Service Division, Police Department. Uh, officers are currently working emergency snow routes, uh, ticketing and towing, making sure that they're uh, clear so that uh, the plows can get through and uh, get them as wide as we can for uh, traffic and emergency services. Uh, we have not moved into uh, zone two or three for any ticketing or operations there. Uh, trying to be um, give a little more time for um, homeowners and everybody to try and get things cleared out and get their vehicles out of there. Eventually, we will move in there and we will start ticketing uh, to uh, start getting vehicles out of there. Um, but it, uh, again, with the amount of snow that we have, we want to give a little extra time uh, to homeowners and uh, folks to try and get their cars out of there. Um, with all the snow and everything that we have in mind, a couple of reminders out there. Um, if, uh, if, if you have to venture out, if you're driving, uh, the number one thing that's already been uh, mentioned here is be patient. Um, with the amount of snow that we have, uh, it's piling up. We're running out of places to put it uh, for now. And as such, um, the piles are going to get higher. They're going to be harder to see around. Uh, lanes are going to get narrowed. Um, we're going to go from uh, four lanes to two lanes to one lane. Uh, so be patient. Um, work with other motorists out there. Uh, look around and uh, please watch for emergency services. It uh, give them uh, plenty of room to get around you um, if they need to go somewhere. Um, not only emergency services, fire, ambulance, police, um, but watch for uh, all the tow trucks in the city as well. Um, they are working just as hard as anybody in this storm. It, uh, they're all overbooked. Um, they're working 24 hours just like everybody else. 
and it uh, without them uh, we would be all under a pile of snow right now um, so it uh, keep all that in mind and as you are out driving um, that patience includes increasing your stopping distance doing good surface appraisals uh, how deep is the snow can you actually make it uh, through it um, is it slick is it uh, glassed over um, and as you're approaching stop signs stop lights um, give extra time to stop um, and avoid those uh, fender benders out there. Um, save everybody a lot about it, uh, time. Uh, make sure and clear all the snow off of your windows in your vehicle um, so that you can actually see uh, when you're driving and see everything around you. There's enough distractions and eliminations out there. This is one that we can take care of before you ever leave. So uh, without that, um, I don't have anything else. It, uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Chief Tim. Uh, Chief John Toom, Captain Gard really took care of a lot of it. What I just want to highlight is the uh, response by our first responders yesterday, um, including Minneapolis County Sheriff's Office, Lincoln County Sheriff's Office, Highway Patrol, other local police departments. And really, it was a busy day for them. And working with uh, the fire department and with uh, EMS as well, our systems worked, our plans are in place. We have plans in place to deal with weather events such as this, is how we're going to respond to calls and how we're going to do certain things. It's just important for people to understand. Uh, when we issue a no travel advisory that that we mean it right that's not something you see very often from us so if you see that take notice i think many many people did take notice uh, but again common sense and just looking at what's out there and making sure that we we take care of each other at this point also you need just to we get a unique perspective to see people helping people it's not just uh, law enforcement pushing people out it's it's random people pushing their neighbors out grabbing a shovel digging in and doing good work um, just on my way home i saw a random college kid shoveling a lady's driveway because she got stuck and I think it's a great time to be a great neighbor and to really build those relationships with our neighbors and you know what get out and help each other and just again a special shout out to I think we talk about first responders a lot and we we don't really recognize the the tow truck drivers and the work they do and the danger that they sometimes see especially in these events and again want people to be patient with them because they're overwhelmed with work right now and I really appreciate everything they do in snow events like this and I'll turn it over to Regan who's got some, should have some good statistics and other things for us to, to look at. Thanks, Chief. Uh, Regan Smith, uh, City Emergency Management. Uh, as always, this was a team effort. Uh, the city uh, multi-agency coordination team started looking at the, this event last Friday, uh, sharing uh, the weather situation reports and, and going into planning mode there. Uh, not only city departments, but Minnehaha County, Lincoln County, uh, Law Enforcement Emergency Management, Metro Communications, XL Energy, uh, and our hospital systems were in constant constant communication uh, really over the last week. Uh, I do have some statistics from Metro Communications 911. That's from uh, 0600 yesterday through uh, 7.30 a.m. this morning. Uh, there were 194 stranded vehicles between the city and the county. Uh, 87 of those were left unoccupied to be checked later on or were occupied and able to safely wait for a tow truck. Uh, 57 stalled vehicles. 27 non-emergency or non-injury accidents, uh, one priority and three injury accidents. Uh, as far as Sioux Falls uh, response in town, PCMS ambulance responded to 87 calls, uh, Sioux Falls fire responded to 62, and Sioux Falls police uh, was the winner with 358 uh, responses. Uh, Sioux Falls fire is still in storm mode. Uh, Dustin did uh, borrow us three uh, large snow plows, and those, with those trucks, we're coordinating joint response uh, with PMCS ambulance, and we'll continue to do that until the, uh, the neighborhoods are plowed out. Uh, the city did have a number of essential employees that we did house at a downtown hotel overnight to ensure they were able to work and do their essential work. And I know at least one of our hospital systems uh, did the same with their employees. Um, I would just uh, encourage uh, residents again to help their neighbors get out there and check on their neighbors, help them shovel out, shovel smart, uh, dress warmly, stay hydrated, uh, take breaks, and and you know move small amounts uh, with 
with each pass of those shovel. And then my final request is uh, from Sioux Falls Fire. Uh, when, when residents are out there and getting cleaned out, I'd ask residents to uh, clear out three feet around those uh, hydrants in their neighborhoods. And uh, I think the snow is going to be here for quite a while. So it's, uh, those seconds are going to make a big difference uh, when those crews show up to get access to those hydrants. So with that, I'll turn it back over to the mayor. All right, well, just to wrap up, really, uh, I think three things I want to close with. One is um, we had a fellow public servant, a plow operator with the county who uh, passed away from a health event uh, yesterday uh, while doing his work. And so uh, our thoughts and prayers have been with the county and with uh, the colleagues uh, of that individual and his family. So I would just ask that people keep that family in their prayers uh, and um, um, think about them during this hard time. Uh, second uh, thing I want to touch on uh, is the fact that uh, right now we're in a we're in a challenging time for for small businesses. Uh, it's already a hard time uh, after the holidays, and uh, now with uh, this weather event, it's really really taken a toll on our restaurants and small business community. So if you can support our small business community in any way right now, uh, please consider doing that because. Uh, uh, it's it's difficult right now and it's challenging as a small business and then the third thing is the best the best way to keep informed on this stuff uh, two two main ways go to siouxfalls.org uh, slash snow uh, or you can also get text alerts by texting snow alert to 888-777 so we're pretty good about keeping people up to date uh, through those two mediums so with that, uh, I want to thank uh, these gentlemen for their great work in this response. We don't have any questions. Dan. It's a great point. If you were driving around yesterday, you saw a lot of people walking in the street. It's just an event like this, let's just be honest, it produces a lot of work for everybody. And that includes the homeowners and people. Uh, it's important you get shoveled, get your sidewalk shoveled out for pedestrian safety. But additionally, we want services to continue. We need Your mailman needs to get to where they need to get to. The officers or other first responders need to get there. Kids, I'm assuming school will be open tomorrow. I, I, can't, I don't work for the school, but I can kind of assume. A lot of kids need those sidewalks cleared to get to get to school and so again there's on many many levels it's from not just a, a safety standpoint but just from from uh it helps everybody out if we get those cleared and when streets are kind of constricted because of all the snow no longer you know two or three lanes but maybe even down to one because there's just so much building up on each side how does that impact safety driving down that street and what should drivers really bear in mind when they're approaching a road yeah, and you'll get to some of our side streets now. And again, we kind of have short memories if you've lived in Sioux Falls long enough. We have historical snowfalls from time to time. And and we know in the past these, these side streets especially get choked sometimes to single lanes by the time the snow has moved. Slow down, common sense, be courteous, err on the side of yielding as opposed to maybe taking the initiative on one of those engagements. And if we just give each other a little more time and space, that's the best way we can do. Because yeah, these side streets, especially if snow mounds starts to get start to get built up a little bit, visibility decreases at intersections. And so it's just, again, a good reminder, especially for a lot of people who haven't seen a snowfall like this before. I have to think back many years since we've had one of this, this size, so. Well, those are those are all all calls for service. We still have other people making interesting decisions in the midst of snowstorms as well. So those are those are normal police calls because those don't stop either. Um, I will say, the difference when I was uh, driving more towards lunch, uh, the, a lot of people really listened to our advice. Roads were empty, businesses were were down, and I, I think it's important to note that many people heeded the advice, realized this was a special weather event, and decided, hey, maybe I should just stay home and and eat what I have in my cupboard rather than making the run to the grocery store, so. You talked about the challenges the weather goes, poses for law enforcement and responding to if you're involved in that kind of thing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a different, it's interesting because we have to kind of look at, 
um, especially from a vehicle response. If you got on some of the side roads yesterday, it was going to be challenging to get through them, even with four-wheel drive. So our officers have to plan ahead. We have to coordinate. I know fire coordinates with, with some of our street department plows. If we really need to get somewhere, we have open communication and good lines of communication where we can coordinate our response. But uh, we do a good job of preparing our officers. Uh, you know, and the other thing too is nobody wants to be the individual that gets stuck. Right? So there's a good, there's a good sense of making sure we, we take care and make good choices, but we're going to get stuck in these situations too. So what you'll see with this, thankfully it was relatively warm, uh, for this event, uh, the brutal cold makes things very, very difficult as well. So we, I think we got a little lucky on that side that, that this wasn't accompanied with some of that really bad cold we'd experienced earlier in the past couple of weeks. So officers here have stuck. Yeah, it's just the reality of doing the job. I tell you what, though, you've seen our fleet with the Ford, uh, the, the all-wheel drive vehicles that we use. The Crown Victoria's got stuck a lot more back in the day. So we were, we were, we've, we've adapted our fleet through time to be able to handle that a little bit better. Any other PD related questions? All right, thank you. So Justin, the goal is for all city residential streets to be cleared out by? Uh, our goal is by noon tomorrow. Yes, I would say patience is the number, probably the key word here in this event, just because we there's so much snow out there and there's so much already there. Uh, but it's going to take us a while to, to get these streets cleaned up. I'm surprised how quickly we're going through some of these. Um, but again, it's going to take us some time. So I, I don't want to say, yep, everything's going to be done by 8 a.m., which it, it could not be. So we could get into some areas where there may be a little bit more snow or drifted and Looking at this right now, that it's snowing out, we may have to go back onto the emergency routes uh, as we speak. So that could uh, that could delay the process as well. You know, I mean, the same thing, um, a lot of ambulances were getting stuck, and so uh, the fire department assisted on those and then eventually went to where we had a task force with those ambulance crews where fire crews and a plow would go on every one of those EMS calls out into those. So, so yeah, we're again, we get stuck just like uh, the PD. We, we move apparatus around, start using uh, more 4 by 4 uh, smaller vehicles on the EMS responses and, and things like that. But, uh, you know, we definitely have, have this, the same challenges as residents and, and other folks do uh, with equipment, with uh, getting our staff into town, uh, those type of things, getting staff to, to work just, just like everybody else, uh, just like the hospital systems and, and everybody else. What are the nature of some of those You know, just, just your standard uh, medical calls you know, that, that we have day to day, you know, I don't know that they're necessarily re related to the events, but uh, just, just your standard calls that, that always happen in a, in a, in a city. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, and we, we do this year round uh, on every event, whatever it is, and you know we have the communication tools now and the technology so we can share that information so we know, um, I, again, what the situation is, what the weather is, and then what each agency is doing, what their role is, uh, what, how they've adjusted their plans, adjusted their equipment and personnel, and, and that way we're not, we only have a certain amount of resources, so we're not duplicating resources those type of things and we're, we're just not in normal day-to-day -day operations and we want to know um, who's doing what and how, th how they're doing it. Is there a certain time, time frame you like to respond to an emergency? Do you still set, set your goal for a time? You know, we, uh, obviously we, we still have those standards but, uh, but you know, it's going to be affected and, you know, you, you just do the best you can uh, with, with the situation. You know, I mean, there's there's some areas on the outskirts where it's drifted and, and those type of things where, where we've gotten through there. But but again, we've worked uh, with the, the additional resources we've had and, and with the street department to uh, to get there. 